Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. So first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our amazing presenters at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off, so we cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions that we're offering, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded. You'll have access to that recording within about a week or so. We have a great lineup of colleges for you all today. We have Western Oregon University, Willamette University, Oregon State University, Cascades, Portland State University, Pacific University, Oregon, and Oregon State University. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our first presenter, Western Oregon University. Awesome, thank you. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Itzel Venegas Trujillo and I'm an admissions counselor here at Western Oregon University. Western Oregon University is located in a small town called Monmouth, Oregon, in the heart of the Willamette Valley. We're about 20 minutes away from Salem, our state's capital, and about 75 minutes away from our from Portland, our state's cultural hub. Uh, we're a public mid-sized university, about 5,000 students with graduate students included, um, making our class size around 19 to 22 and our student to faculty ratio about 15 to one. Our admissions requirements are pretty simple. We're looking for a first year student to have at least a minimum of 3.0 cumulative GPA and have completed or will complete four years of English, three years of math, three years of, uh, including algebra two, three years of science, three years of social science, and two years of the same second language with a C minus or better. Um, take note that past grades or credit courses um, do count um, due to COVID-19. Um, if you're thinking of transferring over uh, to, from after a community college, we're looking for a transfer student to have at least a 2.25 cumulative GPA, college GPA, with 36 transferable quarter credits and 20 or 24 transfer, transferable semester credits. In order to process your application, we really only need your WU online um, application. Right now, the application fee is no longer required for both freshmen and transfer students. It is free to apply for a limited of time, so to definitely take advantage. With that being said, we are accepting um, self-reported GPAs. Um, therefore, there's no need to uh, send an official transcript um, at this time for admissions purposes. We are on rolling admissions, meaning we do not have a deadline to apply. However, our priority soft deadline um, is February 1st for scholarship purposes. Uh, please note that if you do not meet our minimum requirements, that's okay. We're willing to work with you one-on-one -on -one, um, and may ask for additional documents to complete your admissions application. One of the main questions we receive from students is, can I afford to go to Western Oregon? And our simple answer is yes, you can afford to come to Western Oregon. More than 78% of our students do receive some form of financial aid. Along with that, we also offer a reduced out-of-state tuition rate, uh, which what we, is what we call what the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. For those of you who do not know, Western Oregon University is part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, what we call the WUI. This program allows us to automatically give all students from these states that you see um, a reduced tuition rate. The tuition fees for students who reside in a WUI state is projected to be around $14,000 um, a year. Since WUI tuition is based off your residency status, any and all major and minor programs are eligible for the tuition reduction. More good news, uh, WU also allows you to stack on all your school funds with your WUI tuition rate so that you're not missing out on any money going towards college. Um, like merit-based scholarships, need-based scholarships, diversity-based scholarships, athletic-based scholarships, and so much more. Another big topic is um, what to study. Here at Western Oregon University, we offer several bachelor's degrees. We have the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, and a Bachelor of Fine Arts. With over 50 majors and minors to choose from within our College of Education, College of Liberal Arts and Science, pre-professional studies, students are able to find their passion to achieve academic success. Um, notable programs include business, criminal justice, psychology, teaching education, computer science, exercise science, biology, pre-nursing, as well as American Sign Language and English interpreting. Uh, please note that here at WU, we do not have any impacted majors. Another big topic is housing here at Western Oregon. We have several options of types of housing, which include doubles, singles, suite style, and live-learn communities. 
For first year students, we do have a one year live-in requirement. As a result, Western Oregon provides up to four residence halls primarily de designed for first year living experiences with residential assistance equipped to help students transition to Western Oregon. For transfer students or any upperclassmen, we do provide upper division residence halls, offering residents the opportunity to, be, to experience you know, living on their own while also still benefiting from such amenities such as private bedrooms, shared bathrooms, tech support, meal plans if they desire, laundry, utilities, and Wi-Fi. Along with that, we offer a lot of opportunities to stay active, stay involved, and receive a lot of student support. Here at WU, we have NCAA Division II Athletics. We have six women's sports as well as five men's sports. We do provide partial athletic scholarships, and if you're interested, let us know and we can point you in the right direction. Along with our sports, we have over 60 clubs and organizations on campus for students to learn leadership skills and pursue their passions. WU students are involved in many organizations, including social action clubs, LGBTQ groups, cultural based organizations, creative art groups, and so much more. From that, we at Western Oregon strive to offer many services in which students can reach academic success. Need help with classwork, academic advice, or looking for career advice? Then we have you covered. Our academic advisors within the Student Success and Advising Center are equipped to help advise students in exploring different majors and choosing the best fit for them. We provide free academic tutoring within many areas, including computer science, math, science, writing, and so much more. For those students who seek career advice, apart from their faculty or academic advisor, you can find assistance through the Service Learning Career Development Center. In addition to career counseling, resume and cover letter reviews, and help with graduate school applications, we support programs that give students hands-on experiences like those of community internship programs, on-campus jobs, and alternative break programs. In a nutshell, here at WU, we pride ourselves in being inclusive, accessible, and affordable, committed to student success and their well-being. Because we are a small university, many students have the opportunity to participate in many different aspects in, of campus. We make it our mission to help students feel comfortable here, whether they're commuting to school, living on campus, or from out of state. Our students are encouraged to be their own individual while also helping the campus community as a whole, committed to their academics and their personal health. Here's my contact information in case you would like to contact me afterwards to talk about how WU can help you in your journey to higher education. I will also be posting my contact information in the Zoom chat for your convenience. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Carla Gutierrez Hernandez and I'm the admission counselor here at Willamette University, which is located in Salem, Oregon. So my hope is that the next few minutes will inspire you to want to spend more time with us through a more in-depth virtual visit, which we currently offer daily. So Willamette is located, like I said, in Salem, Oregon, the state capital and heart of the beautiful Willamette Valley. We are a liberal arts college that's supported by graduate programs in business, law, theology, and soon the arts given our merger with Pacific Northwest College of Arts. We're located in a part of the country that's sought after for its natural beauty, diverse ecosystems, outdoor opportunities, and many places to explore. Willamette was established as the first university in the Western United States founded before Oregon was even a state. Willamette began to educate and shape and shape and innovate leaders right from the beginning, including our very first graduate, Emily York. I mentioned our history because it's important to understand Willamette's rich heritage in order to understand who we are as an institution today. Willamette's legacy of leadership and impact in the community is exactly what our current students find here today, where a place that takes knowledge and turns it into action. Willamette's model grounds on the Willamette experience in a very real way. The model, not onto ourselves alone anymore, sums up what those really, um, those early alumni knew from their time at Willamette. We are in the world together and our education should be a time when we practice and explore how we will have an impact on others. We talk a lot about the model and continually challenge ourselves to live in it in new and various ways, both inside of the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. Willamette focuses on providing students both in and outside of the classroom experience and really being able to practice this idea of the motto, making a positive impact through change, uh, through leadership, service, change, and innovation as well. In the classroom, Willamette students meet in small groups where highly engaged faculty learn primarily experiential based classes. Small groups interacting classes are designed to help students develop the important skills that will help them see through their lives and careers. Skills like critical thinking, creative problem solving, and the ability to consider various perspectives. Our faculty are accomplished scholars. They research, write, and publish extensively, but first and foremost, they are teachers. Willamette faculty serve as mentors, helping students really learn and how to really help them be able to be accomplished scholars and students in while their time at Willamette. So it's no wonder that Willamette has had one, had more Oregon Professors of the Year than any other college in the state by quite a margin. 
We feel strongly that the incredible classroom environment at Willamette is critically supported by experiential and co-curricular activities, things like study abroad, hands-on research, and internships that are interactive out of the class experiences that all Willamette students participate in. Our, our unique location contributes significantly to our ability to provide these opportunities. So let me tell you a little bit about the place in our world. We're an urban campus set in the center of Salem's Quainton downtown corner, and we are the only campus in the nation that sits directly across from the state capitol, 76 feet to be exact, where you can imagine the internship and research opportunities that are found from our students from everything in politics to economics to psychology and data science, simply because of our proximity to and a long relationship with the state government. Also unique to our location is the positioning of Salem Health, one of Oregon's largest hospitals, which is directly on the other side of campus right across from us. That really helps provide to strengthen our overall pre-med program here that is well supported given that close, uh, close proximity to the medical resource. Willamette also owns a 305 acre outdoor learning laboratory called Xena, where students can literally dig in the dirt of its own unique region, restoring habitats, participating in forestry study, and even growing vegetables. Finally, William is co-located with Tokyo International University of America. The American Studies program brings 100 Japanese students to live and learn with us in Salem each year. And this program is a great reminder that William's strong commitment to all things international. We value the experiential learning that comes from exchange students who share a campus as well as the amazing opportunities that students find while participating in the 66 study abroad pro programs that we offer on campus. As you can see, Willamette is physically located in such a way that we are literally surrounded by opportunities for our students to extend our learning beyond campus and in the classroom. Before my six minutes are up, I just want to mention to that Willamette uses the common application. We review applications holistically and we've been fully test optional for several years and we never charge a fee to apply because we don't want that to be a barrier for any student seeking access to Willamette. And every applicant is considered for our generous financial aid awards. Willamette encourages applications from bright, diverse, and prepared students who want to make an impact and interact with challenging ideas. So if you want to be part of these deep traditions and history that have been made so far, Willamette, and really help uh, Willamette shape these innovative leaders, I hope you take the time to learn more about us. Um, feel free to visit our website to explore more extensive virtual visit options and opportunities um, to either be in person or virtual, whether that's an admission interview, an information session, or attending one of our virtual campus tours that's led by one of our current ambassadors here in the office and hearing directly about the current student experience from them as well. So, but again, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, I am more than happy to chat with you or feel free to just email our main office line, uh, which is bearcat at willamette.edu or you could also just give us a call and we're happy to connect with you and find the appropriate resources here. Thanks. Good evening, everybody. It's Ben Hagen from Oregon State University on the Cascades campus, and I'm excited to be with you tonight to talk about some of the things that are going on on our campus. And as we talk about uh, OSU Cascades, we're talking about a student body of about 1,400 uh, students total. So we are a small organization, um, or a small university, rather, with a big impact because we're connected to this campus in Corvallis. And so we have all the resources and opportunities of a large campus, but a small community of students that are interested in who you are, what you do, and how you do it. We're based right here in the central, uh, in central Oregon, right in Bend, Oregon, and you don't have to take our word for it, but Bend's a pretty amazing place to be. We're just a few miles from the Deschutes River and just a handful of miles from uh, Mount Bachelor, one of the world's premier ski resorts. And of course, the outdoors is at our front door. We have a remarkable opportunities to get outside so very quickly right here from uh, Our residence halls um, uh, feature many of the most common amenities and, and future amenities that you were hoping for. The one I like in particular, because if you're interested in getting out into the, out into the great outdoors, we do offer climate controlled and secure gear storage. So bring your bikes, bring your skis, uh, bring your stand up paddleboard and we'll be um, off to the races in between classes and on the weekends. Speaking of student life, we have a number of uh, student life opportunities, everything from a competitive rock climbing team to esports and skiing, but also all the uh, organizations that you have would expect to be with your major 
This is one of our buildings. This is our uh, dining facilities in that front corner and upstairs from that is some of our lab spaces and classrooms. So grabbing a cup of coffee or a bite to eat on the way to class is not only uh, easy, you'll often run into faculty members doing the same thing. And at OSU Cascades, they're gonna know who you are and what class you're going to and what you're all about. This is another one of our building, Tyson Hall, where some of our faculty offices are and some of our non-lab class spaces. But we're also known for some of our um, uh, signature programs, uh, particularly those in engineering sciences, engineering systems, and outdoor products. And so if you're interested in bringing that next generation of outdoor um, goods to, to do, this is a program for you. But we have more than 21 undergraduate majors and options, everything from art and biology all the way to um, kinesiology and sustainability. But what's baked into all of our programs is an is an ex experiential learning process. You caught me late in the day. And so there's a way that just like Tristan here is working at Mount Bachelor, um, getting, getting her internship credit under control. She is also gaining valuable experience to get herself out on the job market when she graduates. This is the type of thing that I said is baked into every one of our programs. Also baked into every one of our programs is the uh, cutting edge faculty doing amazing research. And so not only are these faculty members doing uh, research on, on climate change and, and desalination of, of drinking water, but they're also doing, thing, uh, doing things like knowing your name, knowing when you turn in a good project uh, in class, knowing when you've got a question about something that's maybe related to class, but not specific. Um, and so if you wanna be part of a community of people who are there to support uh, you in your journey, uh, OSU Cascades is a great place to be. And speaking of going on in your journey, this is a small list of the places that um, our graduates go on to work. And so we've got a tremendous opportunity for you to launch uh, your career right here at OSU Cascades in Bend. Please contact me at your convenience. We've had a lot of great opportunities for you and we would love to show you around. We've recently relaunched in-person tours. Um, and so just give a holler at me, we can get one scheduled for you. So this summer when the Common App opens, please apply to OSU Cascades in Bend, Oregon, and we'd be happy for you to be part of our community. Thanks so much. help if I unmute my mic and turn on my camera. So sorry about that. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dave Kobzina. I am the Assistant Director for Transfer Recruitment at Portland State University. Been with PSU for about 15 years, so uh, hopefully pretty knowledgeable about the institution. And I work directly with students from Northern California as well as Utah. Uh, so Portland State, we, uh, we have about 26,000 students all together. We are uh, the state's only urban institution. We're located right in downtown Portland. So we're on about 50 acres. You have a great campus, including the park blocks, uh, which are pictured right here. At the same time, we don't have any defined boundaries because we're still using Portland as our classroom in many ways. And I'll talk about that more as we go along. We are the state's most diverse for your institution. Just under 50% of our students identify as coming from a diverse racial or ethnic background. 37% of our students identify as first generation. It's also a little bit of a non-traditional university and that 60% of our undergraduates are transfers. The average age of our undergrad is 26, a little bit older uh, when it comes to that. Now we have 10 residence halls on campus, so it is guaranteed. That is a question I get asked a lot is, do you have on-campus housing being an urban school? Simple answer is yes. It is guaranteed for first year and for incoming transfer students, although it is not required. Um, we do have uh, about 200 different clubs, very civic minded, a lot in the way of community service, student government, sustainability initiatives, really trying to make things better for future generations to come. Sports, we are a division one school. We're in the Big Sky Conference for everything except softball, which is part of the Pacific Coast Conference. I realize it's only mid-April, but I'm really very, very excited about our basketball season uh, that begins in the fall. And that's primarily because we hired two new coaches and they had their introductory press conferences today. Uh, both our, our former assistants are now, they were assistants, now head coaches. So, uh, so we're looking forward uh, to that. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. I don't care. Um, 
So academically, uh, we require every every student in order to graduate must do an internship or a community based project, although many will do both. It's all about the hands on learning because we don't want you to graduate and say, OK, I've got this piece of paper. What do I do with it now? It's about being able to apply it towards your long term career goals. You're going to see some of the top employers that we work with uh, across the city, although we have students that go international uh, once they complete their bachelor's degree. It depends on what the, exactly they're looking to do. Academically, we have about 200 programs you can choose from housed under these different schools and colleges. While we don't require that you declare a major coming in, that is mandated by the end of your sophomore year. And at the very least, you would have to declare an advising pathway. We have seven of these where we group similar majors together. So if you say, I'm not exactly sure what I want to study, but I know the general discipline. For example, if you want to do art, you would choose the design, creativity, and performance pathway. This means you have an assigned academic advisor from day one, and they will work with you throughout your four years. I forgot to mention that some of our bigger programs that we offer are going to be in business and engineering. Those are the top two, along with health sciences, graphic design, as well as psychology. Uh, just like Western Oregon mentioned earlier, we do not have any impacted programs either, so your ability to graduate in four years is very doable. Now, one thing with a lot of our students, especially in high school, they're taking uh, college credits. All of your courses, as long as they're college level, will transfer to Portland State. In terms of how they come over, you can take a look at our transferology website, or if you just want to email me your unofficial transcripts, I can do a, a pre-evaluation for you. Uh, when it comes to that. Admission requirements for incoming freshmen, we're looking for a 2.5 GPA or higher, and that's cumulative unweighted, and then our subject areas all with a C minus or better, four years of English, three years of math through at least algebra two, three years of science, three years of social science, and only for Oregon high school graduates, two years of the same second language. We are test optional, we have been for many years, so nothing has changed as far as that goes. For transfer students, we're looking for at least 20 credits, 20 semester, excuse me, or 30 quarter credits with a 2.25 GPA, and then completion of what we call writing 121, passing that with a C minus or better. So long as you meet those requirements, you're going to get into the university. Um, our priority application filing date is June 15th, uh, but we operate on a rolling admissions basis. We are still taking applications for this fall, so if you're interested, we'd love to have you apply. If you're looking to start, say, in the fall of 2022, we'll, we, we will be part of Common App uh, beginning, on, excuse me, beginning on August 1st. Now, cost of attendance, we do break it down for, for standard out-of-state and then with WUI, Western Undergraduate Exchange. So you'll see typically non-residents pay about $30,000 a year. With WUI, it is about $14,300. And then we factor in other expenses that you want to account for as well. So it could be anywhere from, say, $32,000 up to about $47,000 per year. Now, how do, how do you qualify for WUI? As a freshman, you need one of three things, either a 3.0 cumulative unweighted GPA, 1270 SAT or a 27 composite on the ACT. Transfer students is a 3.0 GPA. So long as you apply for admission by June 15th and you submit your final transcripts by August 1st, you will receive WUI for four years as a freshman, two or three years as a transfer student. Now, if you do not meet the eligibility requirements for, for WUI, we have the out-of-state opportunity scholarship. Minimum GPA to be considered is a 2.5, uh, and that's good for up to $6,000 per year. Unfortunately, students cannot receive both. It's either or, depending on which of the criteria uh, you meet. We also have a general scholarship application that I would certainly encourage you to look at as well. If you have questions after this evening, please reach out to me. I'll put my contact information in the chat. Uh, but I would love to connect with you at some point going forward. So thank you very much. Excellent. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Derek Nagley, and I am one of the admissions staff here at Pacific University, Oregon. And I'm here to spend a little bit of time just chatting with you and telling you a little bit about the school. And as one of the admissions counselors, I'm actually on the other end. When you apply to Pacific, I'm actually going to be there answering emails, reading your applications, so you get to know real people while you're here. And we're a small private liberal arts university. We're located about 25 miles west of Portland. So drive time, you're about a half an hour drive from downtown Portland, depending on traffic, and about an hour from the Oregon coast. So where we're situated is an amazing in-between location where you can still fly into Portland International and be able to get all the way out to campus on mass transportation as we are part of Portland Metro. But the other direction, 15 minutes off campus and you're hiking in the Tillamook National Forest. So you get this amazing opportunity to experience all of the things that you get to see about Oregon 
in one area. You can be able to make these quick trips out to the coast, up to Mount Hood, into downtown, and then come back out to Forest Grove where it's a little bit smaller, a little bit quieter. You can take a deep breath and focus in on what you're doing. That being said, Forest Grove is still part of that Portland community. You are able to get out, you are able to connect, and there's places like Nike, Xerox, Columbia, World Headquarters right near our campus that our students can connect into as well. And when we talk about students at Pacific University, we're talking about a smaller university, about 1,900 undergraduate students and about 2,000 graduate students. So we're going to be on the smaller end, and our graduate students are on a separate campus. So we're going to primarily focus on that first four-year bachelor's degree. And at Pacific, when you apply, you're applying to Pacific. There's no extra applications for a specific school or an honors college because we treat all of our 65 different majors, minors, and programs as if they were that high honors level so that you get the best possible education no matter what you study when you're coming into Pacific. And within those 65 programs, you're going to find the things we're best known for are pre-health professions, physical therapy, optometry, um, pharmacy, but we also have nationally and regionally ranked creative writing, education, business, and social work programs. So you're going to be able to find a little bit of everything while you're at Pacific. And no matter which major you choose, you're looking at small classes. Average class size is only 19 students. Our largest lecture hall only seats 60 students. So your professors are going to know who you are and where you're from. They're going to call on you in class. And at Pacific, those are real professors. Every single class is taught by a full professor. And most importantly, we give you a four-year graduation guarantee at Pacific. No fifth year, six years, or victory laps, but you get to come in and get a four-year education. Even if you aren't 100% sure what you want to study when you come in, you have till the end of your sophomore year to make that decision and still be on track to graduate. And as Dave mentioned earlier, the other part of this is to not walk out with just a piece of paper and a good luck handshake, but be able to back up that education you've got with real life experience so that at the end of those four years, you can go into the working world. And we do that by starting job shadowing, research, and internships your freshman and sophomore year of college. Not waiting till you're late in the process and it's too late to change your mind, but that you get to start job shadowing freshman year and then build on that for all four years here at Pacific. And every single senior will do a project here at Pacific as well. What it means is you can take places like going to Nike, put that on your resume, and be able to take that next step right out of undergraduate and not have to go back for extra years and be able to get into graduate school, internships or on a career path at 93% last year, even in the year that we were in, we were very proud of what our students are able to take into the community. And at the same time at Pacific, we want our students to have an outlet, to find something else they love about campus. And whether that's joining some of our 70 different clubs and organizations like student government, Greek life or our Hawaii club, or maybe playing in the band or the choir, singing in a, or acting in a play, or being part of our 24 varsity, 28 intramural, and 10 club sports at the NCAA Division III level, our students are active. In fact, our average graduating senior last year was involved in three clubs or sports that had nothing to do with what they're studying. And we encourage that so that our students have ways to find other things to connect back into their major. That also applies to taking that education outside of the classroom, maybe exploring the Pacific Northwest that you can see in this picture here behind me with Outdoor Pursuits Office, and taking trips or studying abroad in 27 sites around the world in whether it's a full semester or a um, winter term or being giving back through community service. As one of the president's community service colleges, we are very, very proud of what our students give back to their communities, both here and abroad during some of those travel classes. And all of this is included in that four-year guarantee. You can be an athlete, you can study abroad, you can major in the science and still get that four-year guarantee while you're here at Pacific. So that is very important to us that you're able to do that. And to do all this, you do need to apply to Pacific. We use the Common App like a couple of other schools mentioned. It's a fantastic opportunity for students in high school. We are on rolling admissions. So we are still accepting applications. Um, we'll start up again for next year. After August 15th, the next year's application will go online. But you can still apply for the fall if you're a senior kind of sneaking in here and seeing if there might be one last opportunity. And at Pacific, again, when you apply, you're applying to Pacific as a whole. There's no in-state or out-of-state tuition, no in-state or out-of-state scholarships or applying for something to get into something. You apply to Pacific. We're gonna look at that application, your essay, the um, academics that we see there. We are test optional. You do not need to send those in, but if you feel they increase your um, academic profile, send them along, we're glad to see them. And on that, you'll be awarded admission and academic merit scholarship ranging from 15 to $27,000 a year. There's opportunities to come and visit campus both in person and virtually in scholarship or those other things that you're great at, like music, dance, and theater, can earn you additional scholarship at Pacific University. And like I said, I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Pacific, so if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. 
I'll put my information into the contact um, or into the chat as well, so you can reach out that way. But I'm glad to answer any questions about becoming a boxer or just the college admissions process. So thank you all for listening a little bit and go boxers. Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here with us tonight. Super excited to share more information with you. My name is Delta Lee, my pronouns are they, them, and I am one of Oregon State University's out-of-state advisors. Um, so if you have any questions at all, um, I'll pop my information in the chat for uh, any follow-up questions that might exist. Um, but just to kind of give an overview of the institution, we are the type of school that is out there. So as a tier one research university, our faculty and staff are advancing the academic fields kind of across the board and our undergraduate students, we want them out there as well. Um, so there's a number of hands-on experiential learning opportunities that we will highly encourage and sometimes require you to take advantage of. Um, one of those might be undergraduate research and you can have help directly from our undergraduate research scholars and the arts office whose whole job is to get students connected with those opportunities as early as their first year. Students are also getting out there through travel abroad. So we are managing over 200 travel abroad programs in over 70 countries and you can go directly to our global opportunities office to get support through that as well. So hopefully you can start to see that we want to get you out there. We want to give you the support to do so. Um, and that happens in a number of ways, including in your classroom, right? So the background of the slide here is actually a really great example. This is a student working on our coastal campus called the Hatfield Marine Science Center in an introductory to marine biology course just to understand what it means to be uh, a marine biologist, right? So that experience will be vibrant for you and it will start um, through your programs. Our main campus is located in the beautiful college town of Corvallis, Oregon. So we are about 90 minutes south of Portland um, and we have just over 26,000 students on that campus. Uh, one of my favorite things about uh, OSU at our Corvallis campus is that traditional college town feel. So the majority of the people in the area are going to be associated with OSU. They'll say go beefs you even if it isn't a games day and there'll be orange and black in all of the storefronts, right? It's a really supportive um, and welcoming environment to spend your undergraduate years. Um, on that campus with a number of students, we have a lot going on as well. We have over 400 clubs and organizations, Division I and Pac-12 athletics, so definitely have that school spirit rah-rah feel. Um, and we also have lots of support for students even outside of the classroom. Uh, we have counseling and psychological services available to all students, as well as seven cultural resource centers, which we identify as little homes away from home for students to come together across any shared identity that they may have. Um, a few examples are our Pride Resource Center, our Black Resource Center, our Ina House Native Student Center, uh, et cetera, right? And all of these are available to all students to celebrate those cultures across campus. When it comes to our academics, there's also a lot that we can offer for you. So we do offer over 200 academic programs. And like some of my colleagues, we have zero impacted majors. So that means that there are no additional admissions requirements for any of our programs. It also means that uh, once you're admitted to the university, you're admitted to all of our majors. So we love encouraging academic exploration in that way. Um, if you're the kind of student who is not quite sure yet what you want to study, you can come in as a university exploratory studies student, which um, allows you to explore academic opportunities for about a year and a half before you have to select your home major. These students benefit from additional advising and events on campus to find whatever academic passion that is that you have. Um, and then on the right hand side of the screen, we have a number of our academic colleges. So these are the general areas of study that we offer. Um, and as you can see, again, lots of opportunities. Uh, so the largest that I, we have coming in every year is probably the College of Engineering. We have 15 accredited engineering programs and about one third of our incoming students as engineering students. Uh, and these folks are getting out of the class in a lot of neat ways. Um, either through clubs and organizations, such as our Mars Rover team, where engineering students build a mock Mars Rover and compete against other schools, um, or through uh, hands-on opportunities, such as the MECAP program, where students are applying to be awarded two paid six-month internships before they graduate. 
Um, the second largest college that we have is the College of Business. So we have a number of programs there as well, including digital marketing, family business, finance, accounting. And these students actually come in and start their learning, their hands are learning right off the bat um, with an exploratory program called Be Engaged, where students are creating or supporting a real world business within their first year. And they're able to take those foundational skills throughout the rest of their years while they're at OSU. Um, another popular program that we have are pre-professional programs. So if you're interested in uh, being a doctor or a veterinarian or a pharmacist, we have those pre-professional studies to get you where you're trying to go. Um, for veterinary studies, we do have the College of Vet Med as well right on our campus. And that is the only College of Vet Med in the state of Oregon. So students, even in the undergraduate years, are able to get that really crucial preview of what that field might look like. Um, and then last but not least, I just want to highlight some of our top programs. We do have the number three oceanography program in the world, and a lot of that is coming from the work at the Hatfield Marine Science Center. Um, we're also in the top programs for robotics, which is more at the graduate level, but even at the undergraduate level, our students are able to glean from some really unique happenings on campus, such as our delivery robots, which are popping around campus right now to deliver food to students to increase social distancing. Um, and then I wanna just end off sharing more about our admissions uh, procedures for students. So we are a holistic review institution, which means that we are looking at all of the information that you send to us and you're not just a GPA or a test score to us. Uh, but speaking of GPA, we do have a preferred unweighted minimum of a 3.0 to be in good standing for admissions for us. But we will review students all along the board there. Um, test scores are test optional. So if you um, would like to send those, you can, but they are not required for admissions or for scholarship review. And that is for all future application terms. So just a personal decision there for you. Um, and then when it comes to scholarships, we are automatically considering all students from eligible WUI states for the Western Undergraduate Exchange. So this is highly competitive, um, but if you are awarded it, you're receiving around $15,000 as an annual award. Um, and then we have other merit scholarships to review students for as well. At the bottom of the screen, you can see some of our deadlines. So please be sure to apply to us by those deadlines through either the Common App or our own application. And you can absolutely let us know if you have any questions throughout that journey. Uh, again, my name is Delta. Uh, thank you so much for being here tonight with us and go Beavs. Thank you. So that concludes our presentation portion of our session today but we're now gonna to transition to the Q&A. So I wanna encourage all of our attendees to continue dropping any questions you have in that Q&A section and our panelists will respond. I wanna encourage all of our panelists to return. Feel free to turn your cameras back on and I'm gonna pose a question to the group. Feel free to respond in the order in which you present it. The question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? That is a great question. I think for me is our um, holiday tree lighting, um, just because um, we are a small school or a small university in a small town. So both our communities kind of come together as well as with our neighboring towns um, into one big celebration. It doesn't really matter what religion you come from and everyone just gets together and does like, you know, um, writing competitions, poem competitions, um, from kindergarten all the way to college level. So it's a pretty cool thing to see at all community members come together. Um, so that's one of the main traditions that I see that I like. <laughs> I think for us at Willamette, uh, the star lighting trees. So on campus, we have these five sequoia trees that form the shape of a star in the tip. And so each fall semester, right before finals, we have like a holiday concert, a dinner where faculty and staff members join us, um, as well as students. But it's a very fun tradition because we have different chamber choirs and acapella groups performing. And then right around late in the evening, we have like almost like a New Year's style countdown, kind of like New York, where we uh, countdown to uh, light up the star trees and these are like really huge enormous trees it's very beautiful to see and also it's a really fun interesting way to get to know professors but also their spouses and partners and um, family members because they join us for that dinner and that tradition as well so I think that would be my favorite one. At OSU Cascades my favorite tradition is literally depicted in the picture behind me which is the outdoors being at our front door. 
Um, students come from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life with different experience levels, uh, with, with being in the outdoors, participating in outdoor activities, connecting to um, the, the, the history and the culture that's in the region. Um, but they're all uh, here to connect in different ways and whether they know nothing, have never backpacked or skied or, or mountain biked a day in their life, can find people to support them and, and help them learn. And it gives our students a way to connect to the great outdoors and the natural resources uh, that many of them are here to study. I would say at Portland State, it's not so much a, tradi a tradition, but the food carts. Um, in Portland proper, we have around 700 on campus. There's somewhere between 25 and 30. And so if, if you're, especially if you're living on campus and you're tired of the cafeteria food, you just walk out your door and you've got, you know, cuisine from across the globe, just pick something up and, you know, just go hang out in the park blocks or whatnot to eat. Uh, but just the variety is, is, is so nice um, to, to, to really enjoy there. So one really fun thing with Pacific is actually about 15% of our students come from the islands of Hawaii. So we have this really large population of uh, students from Hawaii who come over and they form our Hawaii club. And they actually put on our largest event on campus. And it's actually a completely student run luau. It's actually the largest student run luau anywhere on the mainland US. So Forest Grove is home to that one. And it's really fun because it all student run. You can actually go watch your friends dance on stage. You can actually take hula classes and dance on stage with your friends. Or if you're like me and learn to dance in a barn in cowboy boots, you avoid that and you just go eat the food they roast right in the middle of campus the traditional way. So our annual luau is definitely the thing that brings everyone to campus and gets us really excited. Yeah, and for OSU, I, would, I can't pick one, so I'm going to pick a whole week. Um, one of my favorite traditions is our welcome week. So we actually, um, you know, welcome new students to a new school year every year with a number of events such as club and activities fairs, um, a number of activities outside of that. So last year we had Nicole Byer come do some virtual bingo, which I thought was really fun. Um, and then we have a number of sporting events happening as well. So welcome week is definitely my favorite tradition. Nice. Thank you all for sharing. Um, one final question. Can you all give an interesting or fun fact about your school? And again, feel free to respond in the order in which you present it. Awesome. Well, my first one is that we believe here at Western Oregon, we believe that um, students should uh, make their mark in the world, right? And so to begin, they actually, um, when you matriculate or come for orientation week, um, you actually get to write your name on the sidewalk anywhere on campus. And it's pretty cool because at the end, once you're graduating, we do a little parade, um, kind of a ceremony to see how far you've come um, from the first day you stepped on class or on campus to the last day um, you're on campus. So it's, it's a pretty cool thing and fun fact that we have um, that you're actually putting a mark on Wu's campus, um, like starting your journey through your um, adult life. For Willamette, um, something we always tell our students who are visiting us in person during the tour, in, on campus is like a seal of our school on the floor, on the ground, right in front of the library. And we always tell the legend or the story that if a student, whether you have enrolled or not, if you step on the seal, you are destined to fail your first class here at Willamette. And so we always caution students and families, even during opening days, which is our orientation, where you cannot step on the seal if you want to graduate. And so it kind of comes full circle that they do everything to avoid the seal and not step on it, but once they graduate, they take a lot of photos and stepping on the seal. So that's a little fun fact, a little story from our campus. A fun fact about Oregon State Cascades campus is that our connection to natural resources and ecology and conservation is literally underneath our feet. Uh, the university is built on reclaimed land in the middle of Bend, Oregon. And so while it would have been much easier for the state to build a new campus out in the middle of the desert or, or out in a big open space, they chose to reclaim land right in the middle of Bend, Oregon and turn it into a space for public use and public education. Um, and, and you see evidence of it uh, on all corners of our campus. It's really pretty neat. So at Portland State, we have uh, what, what's defined as the million dollar tree. Uh, it's situated right in front of our library. And when they were constructing the library, uh, we had protesters that basically said, uh, you're not taking this tree down. So the architects were forced to build around 
the tree just to keep it uh, preserved and it has been you know with us for for hundreds of years um and so it's definitely when you when you go to see the library you'll understand why that tree is, is so important to us so i'm going to help all of you with a little bit of trivia for the evening so in case it ever comes up in a random trivia contest Forest Grove, Oregon is home to the world's tallest barbershop pole, and it's on the Forest Grove campus. It's actually to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Forest Grove Barbershop Ballad Contest. So if you ever want to see something really entertaining, um, people get real excited about barbershop ballads out in Forest Grove, and it happens right on our campus. And so it's really entertaining to watch. And the other fun part that kind of connects it in is it's actually behind one of the field goals on our new football field. So when they're actually kicking the field goal, they're aiming for the world's tallest barbershop pole. I love all of these. Uh, this is very interesting. Um, for, for Oregon State University, um, I just saw some new news that I thought was pretty interesting. So fun fact is that we have a, a distinguished professor, Jane Lubjenko, who was just appointed as the White House Deputy Director for uh, Climate change and uh, trying to save the environment and things like that. So she's coming out of our College of Earth, Ocean, Atmospheric Sciences. Some really cool work happening there. So we're really proud of Jane. Nice. Thank you all for sharing. With that said, this concludes the, our session for today. Um, but I do have a few closing announcements. So as you exit from this session, a Zoom survey will appear. It's approximately four questions. But please complete the survey. It's extremely useful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings. I also want to remind you that you can sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site. And finally, a recording will be available within about a week or so. With that said, I want to thank our attendees for joining us. But I also want to thank our panelists. I hope everyone has a great night.